Oh my gosh. Playing Jane on one side. They're brothers. <laughs> hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. All right, so we are at 11.26 a.m. It is a Friday morning, yet yeah, almost afternoon. Um, don't know the date because that would require too much brain power on my end. That said, we are in Benton, Pennsylvania, and we are at everybody's favorite barn. Um, that's right, it is Rutherford Farms, guys. We are back, and I am excited. It's a beautiful day. The first time that I've been here when I haven't been freezing cold, so I'm really excited. <laughs> it makes me really excited to be here, um, get out, enjoy the sunshine, get into the barn, root around, see what we can't find. Um, excited to, to be back, guys, so let's get inside or outside. Let's get to the barn, shall we? It's like I said, it is a beautiful day out. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out down here. It looks like we've got a lot of furniture pieces. Pull Look at those giant spools. Those are huge. Um, so again, beautiful day. And of course, we've got the barn itself and we'll get in there in just a moment. We're gonna check out some furniture pieces. I mean, hey, you never know, right? Not that I would, of course, ship any of this, but <laughs> look at that old wheelchair there. Some old trunks. Definitely keeping it rusty and crusty, right guys? All right, well this stuff's a little bit big for us, but still a good variety of items. Let's get up in the barn, shall we? Oh my gosh, it's so nice out. I am so excited. Look at the old milk canisters. It's a path to heaven, folks. Oh, she's up there sweeping. Alrighty guys, here we go onto the interior. It was so nice to be out here on such a beautiful day. Um, the first thing that of course catches my eye is this beautiful jardinier um, in that pink and green and brown. We've got some other little smalls up here tucked away in the cabinet. Interestingly enough, um, the smalls were catching my eye. So we kind of, I, I guess this is really where the idea hit me. Um, and at Rutherford, you never know what you're going to find, including little cupies kind of tucked around everywhere. Um, look at that. The ambiance is just amazing. We've got some whole brown drip. We do have a little glass cabinet here. Um, it does appear to have some Victorian era 1800s, early 1900s, the uh, white cast, um, ruffle vase. We've got some Indiana glass in here. We've got some Westmoreland, a little bit of depression in both yellow and greens. Um, again, those kind of like that Victorian era souvenir with the ruby to it. No, I don't think those were actually Victorian inspired uh, by the Victorian era or uh, what shall we call that Victorian revival? <laughs> <laughs> We've got some little plush dolls over here. That little Ringo, he was really cute. He was kind of speaking to me, but he didn't really say take me home. He definitely wanted to have his moment on film, folks. So again, we are in a barn, of course, and uh, I love the way that the light comes through. Um, it, it's just It just makes it very magical. We do have some lamps tucked away down here, a lot of Hollywood Regency. Uh, this ceramic piece did catch my eye. It is a dark navy blue. It is hand-painted. It is made in Italia. So you know what? I loved the shape. I love the hand-painting. I love that uh, indigo blue, or pardon me, that royal blue um, with that gold. So I do decide to go ahead and pick that up. Now, there are a little couple of chips here, but you know what? Price is right, so I decide to go for it. Up next, we're seeing a lot of little smalls kind of everywhere. And again, the idea, I think it, it I didn't have the idea um, until a little bit later on in the video. And of course, we'll, we'll update you as we get there. But I was just seeing all these little fun things kind of tucked around. Now, of course, up here on the wood beam, we do have some tins. Love um, how they're kind of displayed and collected together. Uh, these make great little additions to any vignette. Um, add a little rusty and crusty to your displays. Um, you know, I've said in the past, sometimes when things um, are in such great condition, it almost leads you to be like, is that a reproduction? <laughs> <laughs> Signs of wear let you know that they've lived a life, right? A vintage or an antique life. 
we do have a little curio cabinet here. I do apologize. I, I see that the light isn't uh, really working in our favor, but you can kind of see what is in here. A, a good number of Hummels. We've got a little Homeco elves there. I find those a lot, so I do decide to leave those behind, of course. But all kinds of different things to choose from, from the rustics, the primitives, uh, vintage and antiques. You just, like I said, you never know what you're going to find. This is a true treasure hunt, though I will say um, I think Sarah does a wonderful job in kind of making things very accessible, um, that you can see things, um, yet you kind of have a a little bit of a treasure hunt left in there. I do see these hats, though. They weren't in my size, unfortunately. <laughs> Again, a lot of the little groupings put together here on various trays. Um, I, I don't know. I guess something was really speaking about that to me today. We do have three. Uh, these are aluminum, the red apples. Now, they do have signs of, of age and wear. I just recently sold some like mint condition yellow apple canister sets. I love those. And we have the Royal Hall here, or the Superior Hall, part of me, and the Poppy, and those are trimmed, of course, in the gold. Love that very kind of 40s, early 50s uh, tin set there. Again, they were showing their age, so I, I do decide to leave those ones behind. A lot of the utilitarian stuff, um, I try to get in as good as condition as I can because they do serve a very um, distinct purpose. Uh, and I like to make sure that if somebody purchases them, they are able to actually use them um, in their home so far as, you know, in the kitchen especially. But you could certainly use them um, for display pieces too. We got a little bit of a little kid's room going on here. I thought that was absolutely adorable. Again, things are grouped together to make them accessible um, and so that the eye can easily see them, yet you still get that feeling um, like, what am I going to see? Can I dig around here? And you can dig around, folks. Again, a lot of the more rusty and crusty here, the almost kind of leaning more towards the primitive vibe. We've got a whole trunk here of craft dolls. Nothing really super special. What was super special was this is a Holland mold, and he does have a little removable hat. Now, the hat does have a crack in it, but that's not really the piece that we're going after. It's a great add-on, but that Rushton-inspired ceramic duck, we definitely pick him up. And I do get this super tacky uh, little chenille rabbit face. Great to put on your refrigerator. Now, we do have a couple more, um, again, talking about super tacky. <laughs> tasticky <laughs> tracky ta tacky trash tastic here we do of course have the plastic canvas um at first i thought they were dull i mean they are technically dolls but they are on the plastic canvas um a little mr and mrs bunny here in their sunday best i thought they were absolutely adorable they're very unique um so I do decide to go ahead and get these. I mean, somebody put some time and some effort into those, and I love the little uh, glued-on eyes. I think that's a cute little detail. So yeah, we get those. Oh, here we go, talking about Holland Mold. Now, this is a little mushroom pitcher, and there is, of course, a matching spoon rest. Sadie did these back in the day. A little, little acorn detail there on the back. Um, now, they, of course, do need a little bit of cleaning up, and that's okay. So I do decide to go ahead and get the set of these. Um, again, I think these are great for spring, fall, Um and even in, in, in the summer, um, again, that spoon rest can be used as a spoon rest. Certainly the pitcher can be used as a pitcher or as a vase and little trinket dish. Here we've got some jewelry, of course. I love this little plastic duck here with a little googly eye. I think he's adorable, though it will stab you. <laughs> Looks are deceiving, folks. He's like all cute and innocent. And then bam, he's drawing blood. Watch out. Now, I do see a number of the little um, Avon uh, buttons or pins in here, and they do contain like little lip glosses. That kind of skews me out. I'm not going to lie to you, but um, hey, to each their own. These will, I will say, they actually do have some pretty good resale value. Um, though we do decide to leave them behind. It, it was just a, a personal preference thing. Um, you could certainly clean out the lip gloss. That wouldn't be such a huge task to undergo. Um, 
But again, you know, do them individually. I think some are more desirable than others, but certainly as like a little lot and you could still get a good deal. Um, and I think that they would sell for, for some pretty good money. Again, that's speaking to the nostalgia of things. And of course, in the case, we saw a little um, cuffling and little tie tack there set. Very 60s and 70s vibe here with the jelly jar. Of course, we see little um, Jerry there. I don't know what is going on with him. He's having a day. And talking about Trashtastic, I mean, there's macrame owls, there's macrame planters, um, but does anybody really have a macrame leprechaun? Look at, that was the back. Look at the front. It's even more special with his little, I love the little buckle that is on his hat. So of course we're going to pick him up. Why wouldn't we? <laughs> Why? Why not? Again, just a great display, wonderful ambiance. Um, I cannot recommend it enough. And speaking of that, uh, Sarah did mention that I know that a number of you have stopped by um, and that you've seen the video. I, You know what? It's fantastic that you've watched um, the video, but more so that you've been so inspired by what you have saw to seek um, Rutherford Farms out. Um, you know, that is really what I want to concentrate on and hearing um, that you guys are going and supporting this small business. I really cannot tell you how much that means to me. Um, you know, the views and the likes and the subscribers, that's all well and good. But to know that in some way, some small way, I am playing a role in helping a small business. Like, thank you so much. I, I, you know. On behalf of myself and, of course, Sarah, Sarah Rutherford, you know, it's tremendous. It, it's an amazing feeling. All right, back to the, the treasure hunt. So we do see some milk glass. Um, these are little Westmoreland and Diamond Points. I like these little ceramic display dishes. Not really enough to, to really want to get them. Um, I think that they would be cute and like a little, especially like a little kitschy kind of display. Uh, obviously, they're very storybook. To market we go. And of course, you've got little boy Blue there being all lazy and whatnot, laying in the hay, not doing his chores. Shameful. So yeah, we're we're looking. At, oh, there's another one of those uh, sheds peanut butter tins. Those are super cute. We've got some little pulleys uh, tucked away in here. I, I think it's just an unusual way to kind of display some smalls. You know, you kind of wonder, what am I going to do with these? Group them all together, put them in a trinket dish, bam. Immediate little vignette and pull together in a display. So we're kind of checking stuff out in here. Some baby toys. We got a little, um, I don't know if that, that's a uh, sandy toy or not. Little blue glass, a little bitters bottle here. Super cute. And I'm finding all these really cute small things. And it's really starting to get uh, the gears grinding here. Um, and, and because it's such a shame, you know, I don't want to pick up such tiny things and, and sell such tiny things. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm like, how can I make this more impactful? So we're going to look through here. I will say, um, that there are, Sarah's got a, a tremendous collection of records that you're, that you're not, I guess I should say, you're not seeing them off here to the right. Um, what I am going to show you though, is, is here in just a few seconds is that there's an amazing grouping of a lot of different books. Um, and I love the books. Unfortunately, it was a little pressed for time. So I didn't, ah! <laughs> She's had a rough life. God love her. Um, but here are the books. Didn't have enough time to really go through. Um, I love looking at the old, especially the antique books from the 1800s, very early 1900s. Uh, the graphics, the fonts, the color, the covers. Um, something very magical about them to me. It, it really just evokes a, a feeling of, mm, I don't want to call it a nostalgia, but it, it, it leaves an impression on me. Um, the artistry, I think it, it speaks to me and it inspires my imagination. Uh, I guess that's where I want to go with that. Got a little rocking horse tucked up there. I mean, why not? I mean, you know, he's proud. We've got a little collection of Avon here. Um, not that there's anything inherently wrong with Avon. I Unfortunately, I think because it's so common. 
A lot of people overlook it. Now here we've got some chalkware. Obviously it is Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy. Um, I kind of debated on them for a little bit, but I thought, you know what? They're in really good condition. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick these guys up. Need a little bit of cleaning, but there's no major chips or cracks. So that was very exciting. All right, guys. Well, we're kind of almost halfway through the video. So I'm going to do a little check in here with you and then we're going to keep it moving. Here we go. You know what, you guys, I just had a really, I think a really good idea. Um, there's so much here and I think that there is a lot of really small things here and I love digging and rooting through it. And I thought, you know what, why don't we get some glass jars or containers here? Um, and I'll show you the three that I have picked out and I'm just going to go ahead and fill it with tiny little bits and bobs, keys and locks and buttons and dice and whatever else that we find. And we're going to fill these three jars um, and kind of make them, you know, your own little piece of Rutherford Farm. So I think that, that will be super fun. I'm really excited to do it. And uh, let's get to that. All right, guys. So here are the three vessels that I've decided to use. Um, we've got a little hat atlas part of me little sealed jar here of course we have a blue ball jar this is number seven it's not a 13 and then we've got like a little uh, i don't know what would this have been it's got a little wood top so just like a little canister set here so we're gonna fill these three things and uh, i'm excited about it i hope you guys are too let's do it all right, well, I am really excited about this idea. You're gonna have to let me know down in the comments what you guys think of this. I, I'm very pleased with the end result. So I'm kind of backtracking and going through and looking at more of those tiny things. And we're just gonna gather them all up here course we got a lock we got a, a little cookie cutter we got a, a witch cupcake topper I'll tell you those cupcake to toppers are difficult to find I, I gotta say um, I'm rooting through kind of the locks here looking for any older ones maybe even a skeleton key um, caveat I didn't find any skeleton keys though I'm loving these little red lockets that one had uh, the keys still attached to it um, there's some great graphics, a little Chrysler key here. I like that for some reason, but there are some amazing fonts and graphics that you can find on some of the old locks. So I do recommend checking them out. You just never know what you're going to find and, and what might speak to you. Um, like this one in particular, I love this lock. Um, I love that fat, the, the flat padlock bar to it there. Of course, we're digging through some more smalls. I did find a belt buckle, really wasn't speaking to me. Um, this one I really liked. It was unusual, Sisters of the Swiss. Um, okay, cheese it is. I know a lot of you out there love you some cheese, so I thought, let me not leave that one behind. So this really does take some rooting through it. Now, this little baggie here was really interesting. It did say it's a little leatherette marked marble, but it does have these dice in here. So I picked these up and tucked that in a jar. I sure did. Now, what I did to make things a little bit easier on myself was I picked up this little silver um, silver plate serving tray and decided to, as I was going through, um, just gather the things up and kind of put them on that display dish tray. <laughs> Um, so there was that little cabinet and these are the little items that I picked out. I love those little Batman-esque little stacking blocks. This little John Deere pom-pom googly eye guy here. Love this stuff. Finding some matchbooks here because of course what would any junk jar or tiny treasure jar uh, be without some matchbooks. Love the, the graphic on the front. There's no matches on these ones but it's all about that box anyhow. That's right. So, of course, we've got a bowl full of keys here, and I'm going to dig through, um, see if I can't find anything of interest. Again, really looking for those skeleton keys. I didn't find any, though I will say, um, now I don't know a whole lot about keys, truth be told, um, that some of the old keys can really be quite valuable. Um, I could be overlooking one of those keys right now. I don't know. Love the little, and I think that glows in the dark, the We Give a Hoot keychain. Um, again, just going on aesthetics. Love these old green wooden handled cookie cutters. I do leave the round one behind, though I do get this little floral uh, kind of detailed one. 
what do we got here? We got a little um, cast iron man here. Of course, he is painted. Uh, it looks like he's gathering up wood, having a hard time focusing on that. So he was really interesting and cute. I uh, found another treasure trove of some dice here. So we're rooting in there. Definitely want to pick up those colored ones, um, add a little visual interest to the jars. Tiny little clear bottle perfume here. Again, it's just something interesting to add a little bit of a different dynamic. Um, trying to stay away from the jewelry and the buttons because I think a lot of times you find a lot of jars are filled with jewelry and buttons. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to keep it maybe a little bit more non-traditional. Got a little collection of keys in here. There's, it appeared to be like some pen cups. Now I did find some camels here. I'm super excited about that one on the palm. Found a little Wade Whimsy, found a little plastic camel there. So we're going to add those to the tray. And then something caught my eye. Can you spot it? We're going towards it. And I'm like, please, please, please. And then I was like, no. <laughs> um, now this one I do think is actually a JB Owens uh, Jardinier. Unfortunately, yeah, she's in rough, rough, rough condition. Um, checking out the back, maybe if the back had an image on it, but that's why I think it's J.B. Owens, because typically they did uh, just one-sided. It was unmarked. Weller was pretty good about marking their pottery pieces. So, yeah, kind of broke my heart, but it is what it is. Um, I definitely said, Sarah, keep your eye out for these, because, um, yeah, these are good. These are real good. And then talking about real good, look at this, a whole little um, cap full of the Halloween cape, cape, I can't say cupcake toppers, <laughs> a little bitters bottle here. It is a ball and claw. It's a little turkey claw there on it. We're finding some um, jacks here. Love these. Some wooden um, checker pieces. So we do decide to pick those up. Why not? A little red plastic cowboy. Heck yeah, we're going to get him um, with his little shooter there. So we're definitely going to pick these pieces up. Again, I want to kind of keep the textures different, the colors different. And I, I know we're calling it a junk jar, but at the end of the day, it's like these little things that really evoke the memories and kind of it being when you open the jar, this little treasure trove of tiny treasures. Um, and something that, you know, we were talking about was that, you know, your grandparents' junk drawer. Did you ever go through them? That's exactly what this reminds me of. So here we got another little grouping found another interesting dice, some letter blocks here. I don't know what those metal things are. Um, some old uh, slug bullets. These were pretty cool. A little poodle, pink poodle pick, because why not? I thought the heads were off of it. And then I was like, no, you flew in, turn her around. Um, now the one is missing a tail, but I was like, you know what? That's okay. Found some wooden dominoes here. Again, love the colors. Love, 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 love that very Art Nouveau style on the back. I do think this was a lamp finial, though it could have been a drawer pull. Um, and I went back for that googly eyed duck. Found a little white enameled deer here. And of course, some plastic deer. Here are some larger items. And guys, that's it. We're going to wrap it up. Well, guys, there we have it. I loved it. I had fun. It's always a joy. What did you think? I'm excited to see what you guys think of kind of like the junk jars, if you will. Um, I really did try to make sure that I got good stuff, but still kind of keep that junky vibe to it. Um, I don't know. I'm excited about it. I know a lot of you have really loved coming out to the farm just as much as I have. And um, thank you so much. I know a number of you have showed up to the farm. Uh, Sarah certainly let me know that. And, and again, that's I can't tell you how happy um, that really made me. That that filled me with joy, actually. So guys, let me know down in the comments what you think of the junk drawer jars. Um, they are going to be uh, for sale coming up on a live sale, I think on a Sunday night. I think what I'm going to try to do is, or Tuesday, I don't know, I'm undetermined. Tuesday, maybe? I don't know. We got three, so I can divide them up. Anyhow, guys, that's going to do it here at Rutherford Farms today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. And as always, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I like these different colors. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. 
He looks good even from that side. Wow, oh my gosh. Playing Jane on one side. They're brothers. <laughs> <laughs> And like a dum-dum, I totally forgot or almost forgot to include um, the end here. These are our finished results. I'm super happy with them. I think that they each have a lot of great visual interest to them. I hope that you guys enjoy them. Again, it's just a, a way to kind of bring a little bit of Rutherford Farms um, to some folks out there. I hope that you guys uh, love them. I, they're super fun. It's an immediate collection. Um, you've got a whole bunch of tinies that you can put up onto the shelf and you know you can dig through them at will. Um, like I said, it was. I always have fond memories of digging through my grandparents' junk drawer. So I hope whoever gets these has just as much fun. All right, guys. Bye now.